I ask what cicadas need and what we can do to help them continue to live in the heart of Sydney. Some species like the larger larger cicadas just record, they need these tall eucalypt trees with dense canopies to be able to camouflage successfully um, from birds and because they they're, they're quite large and they and they can also just sort of they're very they can be quite conspicuous on the main trunks of trees too. When they tend to chorus, they they chorus because they can get louder and they can you know reach more females in the area. But it's also, I mean, like like you and I would both know, it's a, it's an anti predatory um, uh, trait as well. So the more you have there, the louder it is, and the and just like us, birds won't be able to stand them. And Do they prefer native plants or exotics? There's a lot more native species being recorded um, that cicadas are, are calling from than, than exotic. So eucalyptus is, is the, the most common. I think there's, there's something like 20 or 25 different species that have been picked up. Eucalyptus, melucas, casuarinas, also pick up um, a number of exotics as well. Um, so things like your jacarandas, your camphor laurels, um, London plane trees. The other um, important thing is soil compaction. So if the soil is too compacted, which it tends to be around a lot of sort of um, urban areas where you get that sort of street planting, but they just leave a small sort of area around it. If you've got that really compacted soil, they can't actually dig out and through that. I don't know if you've, you've ever seen sort of one move um, when, it's, when it's in that fully matured nymph state. They're very, it's very awkward, very slow. Well, they're very slow at getting through compacted soil and, and soil that's, yeah, that's, that's got sort of heavy grass over the top of it and and they are sort of against the clock where they if they don't sort of get to an area where they can start emerging they'll just desiccate and die the point is it's not just the um trees or the species that you you plant is how you actually sort of treat the the whole area you know the the soil isn't compacted you don't yeah you buffalo grass all the way up to to tree so minimal soil disturbance and that sort of thing Conserving native species or planting native species is going to be um, more beneficial to um, cicadas in, in the long term. Large green spaces, particularly the, art, the Royal Botanic Gardens in Sydney, is just is, is a, you know, a really critical um, habitat refuge for, yeah. for cicadas. Because of the unique life cycle of cicadas as well, it's going to take decades before you can really um, sort of know. and as much as I sort of hate to, to say it, I think it's just going to end up being like a, a, a retrospective thing where we say, I mean, even now through hearsay where, you know, the majority of people you say, talk to 40, 30 years ago, um, or even 20 years ago, there was, there was a lot more cicadas than what there are now, but we just don't have the data to be able to prove that. And, you know, people have said, well, why, why don't we look to, um, you know, put some cicada species on the threatened um, species list or try to and it's like well how do you how do you do that you need to you need to follow them for multiple cycles to know that they're actually gone from yeah. you know a, a certain area and that's kind of reflects the the boom in um, citizen science projects too because yeah. I mean you know cicadas are periodical and and we don't know what exactly triggers their emergence you know being able to have access to these citizen science um, avenues is, is just gold. It's gold because there just aren't enough entomologists in Australia to give us the understanding of cicadas that we would want. So scientists need help from us around Sydney and Australia. Nathan Emery's Great Cicada Blitz has been going now for about five years and has collected more than 7,000 observations of 77 species of cicadas. 
And now as we're heading into cicada season, if you contribute your sightings this spring and summer, they'll help build the picture of where our various cicadas are and when. A lot of my work with them now just sort of tries to sort of share those experiences with other people and get them to actually take an interest in the diversity that we have, even, even in urban areas. These ideas have got me thinking about how we plant out our private gardens and our public spaces. It seems to me we need to change our thinking about these green spaces. Trees are wonderful, yes, but they're not sufficient for urban nature and for biodiversity in the city. The trees are part of a system and what we have beneath the trees and underneath the ground are also so important. We need to rethink our streets and parks and gardens and create spaces that have diversity and richness in layers of plants and healthy soils, not just grass and concrete, but an understory of plants as well as the trees. And we can do it and are doing it more and more places all the time. Maybe over time, if we can embrace these wilder approaches to plantings and protect the habitat we already have, perhaps we can see and hear more cicadas and more of other biodiversity in the future.